we're looking at, I mean, we're going to start with the Riesling. This is a, um, a single vineyard, Riesling from um, a vineyard called Stonegarten, which is out the very yeah. east of yeah. um, Eden Valley. So Eden Valley goes across the valley, valley floor. Yeah. Eden Valley, you go to High Eden. Uh, and then you actually go down the back of Eden Valley, out further east. Yeah. Um, and that's where you get uh, where this vineyard comes from. So this is more about um, the soil type. It's, it's quite like yeah. the smashed up granite. Um, you'll see there's some mica shimmering in the, in the summer sun and all the rest yeah. of it. And so it, for acidity-wise, this is... Um, Really, really low pH mm-hmm. reasoning, so it's quite. Um, mm-hmm. If you're talking about ageability, but um, mm-hmm. what I've done with that, and also you talk about everyone loves the, the standard spiel for for selling high-end Shiraz is oh, tiny yields and heaps of flavour. You don't ever translate that to whites. <laughs> yeah, but this reasoning is tiny, tiny bunches, tiny berries, tiny yields. Yes. Gets hand-picked, um, squeeze it, and start fermenting it. Um, but because it's quite naturally acidic, yeah, I actually do some barrel ferments in smaller oak. Yeah. In older oak, just, just to give a, a textural element to build it. Build the mouthfeel a bit. Build the mouthfeel, because so it's quite acidic. A, and it's, it's not really creaminess, but just some, some more generosity some in the mouthfeel. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and so and it's completely dry, so it's bone dry, yeah. um, but it just, just adds. And also that, if you're ageing that way, and also it's on leaves until about October, November as yeah. well, yeah. it just gets that, it's not oxidative, but it gets a bit more of that broader element that you can mistake yeah. for fruit as well. And yeah. so yeah. what would be a quite acidic, razor-sharp Riesling, um, is that you can drink it now or you can you can age it. And that's what the balance has got to be, is that some people do want to put it down, so you've got to try yeah. and find a way to, <laughs> to, to walk to... Try to please everyone. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not, I mean, it's warm climate, Brosser, so I always have said, ever since making wine for this many years, it's always been just err on the shorter side for me. You know, you, yeah, sometimes yeah, you get yeah, these yeah, predictions yeah. it's going to live for 30 years, I don't know how you're storing yeah. it or whatever. Yeah. Just yeah. Well, this is actually the really difficult thing for, for me as well. So like people ask me, yeah, how long is it going to age? And I go, well, on face value, you're tasting it. Um, I would think this. But then someone turns around and says, oh, well, you know, there's no sulfur in there. Yeah. Or there's bucket loads of sulfur in there. Yeah. And that completely changes the scenario. So. Yeah. yeah. So, how do you know? And so <laughs> so the, the solution is you buy a case and you drink a bottle. Yeah. It's every, true. Every, every couple of years. Yeah. And, and, uh, and until you hit a peak and you go, hmm, really yeah. like that and hoover it. Yeah. yeah. Or you go, this is my last bottle. I missed it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, and then for next time. Then, and then, and then, and then the, the wine making will have completely changed and you'd be stuck anyway. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, something else would come in and it'd be different. Well, this is, I mean, I've never been a fan of, I like reasoning it to a point, but um, I always found that the, and this is probably a great thing for Australia, that a lot of the Eden Valley and Clear Valley reasonings all have a very similar theme to them. Um, mm. And so they always release quite early and they have a, they all sort of look in the same vein for, for most of the, the single area varieties you get, I think, reasoning. And that's sort of get a bit boring drinking sometimes, and that's why I wanted to yeah. just mix it up a bit and try something different. Well, it's interesting you say that because... Probably the bone that I have to pick with a lot of the Aussie reasoning at the moment is that I, I see it being a bit too juvenile when it's released, yeah. a bit too primary. Yeah. And it frustrates me because I see so much more going on that, that maybe, um, you know, a little, just a tiny little bit of work. It's not necessarily work, but just yeah. taking a slightly different tack might have brought it forward a bit to get rid of the puppy fat yeah. earlier. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I see in this one. The puppy fat's gone. Yeah. Um, so I see, you know, beautiful juicy acid. Lovely fine line of acid. It's almost, you know, it's got that sherby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, has, and then a bit of lime, 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 lime juice. Yeah. Um, but that, 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 um, that barrel time. Yeah, so really it's about 10%. And yeah. also it gets, we separate pressings and I ferment the pressing separate. Yeah. And it actually does get some of that put back in as well yeah. for that fatness. So you go a bit oxy on the pressing yeah. to pull out some of the phenolics yeah. and keep fineness. Yeah. So what I'm saying there, guys, is uh, if you oxidise pressings with a lot of phenolics in them, the oxygen uh, uh, reacts with the phenolics and they tend to drop out a solution. So those phenolics are responsible for mouthfeel and texture and sometimes they can be perhaps a little oily or yeah. even hard and... If you, you know, know the kerosene fruit. thing in there as well, yeah. really. Yeah. yeah, if you know your fruit, you yeah. know how that responds to the, the pressings, yeah. the faction, will respond to the oxidation, then you can handle it appropriately. Yeah, and <laughs> these, all the whites I do are all um, very oxidated from day one. I don't use CO2 on the juice and that. So the, the juice is brown when you're fermenting yeah. it. And then yeah. obviously, like you're saying, it, yeah. everything just settles out. Yeah, and yeah. then you end up with a, still a fine well, line. But I mean, you have a look at the colour of that. That is just... That's, I mean, I know we're looking at a brown table, but I've, I've got a bit of a, a white label here, and yeah, it's pristine. It's pristine. It's, it's still got a green edge on it. And to be honest, I really don't look at that stuff terribly much. As long as Just it smells it. and tastes great, I don't really care about the colour. Cloudiness, another matter. I've got a bit of a, a challenge with that, but um, um, lovely wine. Yeah. It's just, just really good juice. And um, that's why this is the second vintage working with the vineyard, so... Um, yeah. Did you say Steingarten or Steingarten? This, yeah, so... Because Steingarten, the Orlando, Steingarten vineyard. Yeah, so Glenn, um, the great grower of mm. Steingarten, he bought it 2015, bought it from yeah. the Hamiltons. Um, and he went to the right channels and went to Orlando and said, I want to register Steingarten as a trademark. And mm. 
or you know, can I use it? And they went yes. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. they're usually not yeah. that magnanimous corporate lawyers, you know. Yeah, they would wow. just say, "Go, you can do it." So I think, I mean, Stone Garden, Stone Garden means the, uh, Stone Garden. So lots of rock. Yeah, yeah. lots of rock. Yeah, <laughs> and then um, so the the Eden Valley and the hills was mostly English settlement, uh, yeah. and then one of the English um, settlers gave the land on the Brosselli floor to the yeah. Germans. So I'm guessing yeah. that. The Stone Garden's on the edge of the Brussels floor, so with Stone Garden because of the German history, yeah. and then Stone Garden for the English history. This is planted by the Randalls, I think, back in the day. Um, yeah, wow. That's so, uh, so William Randall from yeah, you know, what, 150 years ago. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I'm guessing it was Stone Garden because of the English. And well, look, lovely wine. I, I I do. I love the texture. I love the fact that the fruit's developed enough, so there's no puppy fat on it. There's a little bit of toastiness on it. Um, and and, least and, contact and, yeah, 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 and a, and a bit of there's a, there's, a, there's an edge of. Um, it's sort of, it's almost uh, a, a kind of slight, slight herbaceous, but not herbaceous, uh, you know, basil kind of character. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. And, um, it's, it's uh, you know, just a very, very minor layer, but um, really good fun wine. Love that. And, yeah. uh, and by the time uh, summer comes around again, that will have just mm. resolved that little bit more, have a slight bit more uh, generosity and be really good. Yeah, the acid would sort of pull it out a little bit so and they'll say guess from me as well when you're adding textures to some of these wines everyone serves their reason so bloody cold mm. but if you let it sit out for a bit that's when that texture really mm-hmm. comes into it itself as well so a lot of times you're losing flavor because you're yeah chilling it's like berry and taking it from the esky and it's a really good point i mean this is this is drinking now probably we're probably drinking like 12 14 degrees or yeah. something like that perfect yeah Bang on. So, um, Straight out of my cell. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Not mine. <laughs>